Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today on another one of our Sound Vision Design Solutions series of webinars. Uh, today, I've got a, a really talented a friend of ours here in the application team at All Acoustics, Jordan. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, Jordan, where are you uh, broadcasting from? Hello, uh, I am broadcasting from Burbank uh, in California, right north of Los Angeles. Um, Excellent. Weather's well, pretty thanks. good. Well, thanks for joining us, Jordan. So today we're actually going to talk about how to do an advanced sound vision room model design. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. And so Jordan is going to work you guys through the uh, the flow of the project uh, in how to create this advanced model and to help out Jordan answer some of the questions in the Q&A. I brought along a crack team of moderators. Uh, I'm going to work uh, near to far. I think the closest one to me, uh, Mr. Marcus Ross. Marcus, thanks for joining us this evening. Hello, good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, webinar. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, just a little bit up the road from uh, the 101 from uh, Jordan there, and a little bit down the road from you, Scott, and Gino as well. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I guess the next up is Gino. Gino coming to us from Westlake, California. Gino, I believe you can hit a driver, or is it a three iron to the office? Is that about right? <laughs> it's uh, it's about a mile and a half, so a hmm, 20 minute walk. But there you um, go. excellent. But yeah, thanks everybody for joining, and uh, hope you're all staying safe and healthy. Excellent. And uh, Vic, uh, you're down in uh, just uh, just outside of Los Angeles as well, correct, Vic? Oh, Vic's buying beers. He missed a pickup. Uh, Studio City, Studio right down City. the street. Excellent. Well, thank you, Vic, for joining us. So, uh, Vic, uh, Marcus, uh, Gino, thank you much. And uh, heading a little bit south, Alex, how are you doing in uh, Guadalajara today, sir? Hey, hi, Scott. Yeah, everything is fine around. And, uh, well, I'm pretty excited about this, uh, you know, uh, tutorial. I'm sorry, uh, this uh, webinar. So welcome everyone, I hope you enjoy it. Eh, a todos los que nos acompañan de habla hispana, aquí estaremos para atender sus preguntas en español. Eh, trataremos de responderlas a la brevedad. Eh, espero que disfruten mucho este webinario. Gracias por acompañarnos. Thank you, Scott. And last and not least, the master himself at Complex Room Designs, Alvin, uh, coming from Kuala Lumpur. Alvin, how are you today? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Scott, for inviting me to this uh, webinar. Um, yeah, I'm from uh, um, from Singapore, but I'm now in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I'll be uh, glad to uh, help out with this webinar. Excellent. And Alvin, you can answer in, I believe it is 37 different languages. Is that correct? <laughs> That's a bit too exaggerating. No, no, just seven. Okay, just seven. So if you guys have any questions, if you're out there and watching us live, um, please don't hesitate to ask questions in the Q&A. Uh, Jordan, I'm going to kick it off to you. So uh, whenever you're ready, why don't you take us on a tour of uh, how to uh, do an advanced room model in Sound Vision? All right, great. Uh, so we'll we'll start off um, kind of about just looking at the concept of of room modeling and what it is that we're trying to achieve. Um, so to get a to get a look, we have a couple ways of getting our models into Sound Vision when we're looking at doing predictions. Um, we have a basic model, and when we're doing that, we're looking at modeling the audience primarily versus a complex model when we are really looking at modeling the entire room or as much of the room as we can, along with any architectural or rigging constraints, in addition to all of the key and critical areas for mapping the audience area. So if we look at a basic model, and this is something that we can easily do within Sound Vision. This doesn't require any other software to do any modeling, but we can do all of this within the tool itself. We give priority to the audience areas, and that's the key area that we're looking for. And this will help us figure out what kind of products that we need. And it is a pretty quick and simplified model. We can shoot the room on site with measurement tools that we have and get a really good idea of the size of the room itself. Now, in doing basic models, this is going to be an approximation. We don't have all of the data that we get in a normal CAD file or any other type of more defined 2D or 3D 
uh, drawing software. And so what this can lead to is it can lead to some inaccuracies and in some measurements, and especially with very difficult drawing details. So this could be a very detailed proscenium arch, any rigging constraints, balconies, overhangs, shadows, or complex audience geometry. Now, if we look at a complex model, these are drawn, and we are taking this data from something like AutoCAD, Vectorworks, Revit, and a whole number of different types of software. And then we are using uh, SketchUp by way of getting into SoundVision. And using this type of data, we are able to get more defined and accurate measurements of architecture and structural elements. We have a much greater sense of improved accuracy and with enough detail we can get much closer to a real scenario that we would encounter and make our models look much like the real venue that it could be. So one of the things that I really like to, to think about and how these models are, because um, there's a, a lot of ways that we can create these models, it's thinking it kind of like in three different tiers. We have your super basic model that you can create in sound vision which is more of like your economy class kind of model and from there you can step up as you get more complex to a business class model which is more of an in-between and then with all of the cad data that you have with ground plans elevations structural elements section views and things like that then we can get onto much more complex models such as something like a quote unquote, first class model. Actually, that makes a lot of sense, Jordan. So that's your analogy here. Um, economy gets you to where you need to go. It's maybe not the most enjoyable experience you've ever had in your life, and someone gives you a terrible bag of peanuts. But uh, can you do the job with it? Yeah, absolutely, right? Um, I mean, and then business class is a proper meal. You can lay down and watch a movie and not have to fight for the armrest. And for first class, you get gold fringed slippers, uh, a set of Bose headphones you get to keep for the rest of your life and six other things. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I think that's a, a great way of putting it. Yeah, that's and cool. I like that. That's a really good analogy. Is there, a, you know, and I suppose uh, with each one of these airlines, I mean, pardon me, designs, um, you have <laughs> a little bit of variance to the quality of each, right? Of course. Um, just kind of using this analogy again, there's a lot of range of even within these different tiers that we have, some of them we only need the audience area because that's all that we're really caring about. This may be a one and done situation where we're going to hang some PA or even ground stack it and we just want to see the performance. And that could be an incredibly basic model where we're just pretty much mapping the stage and the audience area. And from there you can create balconies and things like that, even in a very basic version. And the level of detail can then start to increase and depending on the needs of the project and whatever details that you need to work with, maybe these architectural elements and maybe lighting elements are very important. So you can start to include those in a business class model, albeit a little bit more simplified versus the incredibly detailed version in a first class model. Cool, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's a really good way of putting it. Thank you, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Great, so I think from this point on, we'll actually jump into SketchUp now. So kind of taking a look at just the beginning of everything and we'll kind of gloss over the entire process as we build a complex model. Um, we can see here that I've imported a CAD file of my ground plan and I have started to label and organize all of my layers within SketchUp so that way I'm much more organized and I know where everything is so that I don't waste time trying to figure out where everything is as I start to build a much more complex model. So for all of the layers that I import into SketchUp to start drawing on, and these are CAD files, PDFs, PNGs, a lot of different types of ways of getting into SketchUp and different types of content. I will start to number them uh, with zero and increment by 10. And this helps me just so that way I know that these are always on top. And as I start to create more layers, 
that I draw with, a lot of these ones will then start to kind of fill out in the bottom as we see here. So that way, if I need to look at my section or my seats, that they're always kind of at the very top for my reference point. So from here, and now that I've got all these things incorporated, it's now time to define the zero zero or the origin point. And this is how our reference is going to be in SketchUp as well as the origin within Sound Vision. And in order to define something like this, we'll for a theater, we will usually go on to the line at which the audience and the proscenium kind of crosses. So we can kind of zoom in here and we'll take a look and see that this would be maybe where the fire curtain is or some kind of defining structural element that allows us to have a physical representation that when we get into the room and start to deploy the system, we have a reference point that we can use. Now for something like an arena, we might use center ice, for example, so that way we have a good reference point that's pretty much symmetrical between all points of the venue. And from there, that's kind of our methodology of figuring out what, what the origin will be. So now that I've figured out what my origin is, which is my zero zero here, I can start to align everything else and that I've got my ground plan, my section and some elevations all lined up. So I can start to see the beginnings of taking this 2D model and all these 2D plans and starting to create something in the 3D world. And the best way to start is I will look at starting to just create the walls and create my foundation here. So I've done and created a trace of the wall. So if we zoom in here, we can see some parts where I've started to cut out elements that I don't need. And this will be the foundation that I can use to create my walls. So we can start to see, and I'll open up this group and we look up here that this is the class that I've called basic wall. And this is one that will be imported into sound vision. So all of these ones in my layers tab over here that have a dash or a hyphen are the ones that I will use to go into sound vision. So that way we have a much greater sense of organization as we work within our model. So I will click into this group here and now then I can start to manipulate these properties. And if we look here, one thing that my primary layer and my default layer is always going to be layer zero. SketchUp is not like AutoCAD or Vectorworks where you have a lot of nested classes. And so the hierarchy for classes and structure is not as robust in SketchUp. So what I like to do is I like to keep my default layer on layer zero. And then when I finish creating a, per, a certain portion of the model, I group it and then assign it to this layer that I want it to be. And it prevents me having confusion later down the line in case I just happen to have a different default layer on and I turn off half the model as I work. So as I start to build this here, I'll look at making my walls to the height of the roof. So I can use the tools over here and push pull and raise this up to the height that seems like a decent height that I would like. And I can start to then cut away at surfaces that I no longer need. And now I have my whole section for the walls built. And it's a simplified version, but you can see that if I wanted to cut out more and more things and get much more detailed, we have the ability to do so. From here, I'll start looking at looking at something building the stage area and getting another part of that checklist done. So I can go down to my stage here and actually see that I've created a stage already. Using the same method of tracing out as we have on the ground plan and then doing some extrusions. So I've already got a couple sections done and then I can start to really build the rest of the entire model, which is going to be much more of the, the challenge as you can see. So if we go into our section view, we can get a look. We have all of these audience areas that we need to create. So we have the orchestra and a couple of mezzanine and balcony areas. 
So one of the things that I do in order to create this, and we'll take a look at the ground plan really quick first. Oh, there we go. That we can see that if we look at the seats, that there is a curve to this section. So if we were to draw this within sound vision, this would be quite laborious and time consuming as getting an arc and an angle in sound vision would be much more difficult and time consuming to kind of follow this curve. So this is one of the reasons why we use SketchUp to create kind of these models. So if I look here and I'll turn off my ground point just to get a better view, we'll normally create what I like to call a rib or a trace of the section. And so I've created one down here already. So now I can actually start to see how this would work. And I can start to rotate this around and start to really create my 3D world that this section will be in. Now there's a couple methods that we can use to create these revolutions. One way that I like to use is uh, the follow me tool, and this is a quite popular one. So we can create an arc which will match the curve geometry that we would like to use. And then take the rib or spline that we have. If we go to tools and follow me, we can select the arc and then hit uh, the surface that we would like to have following this curve. And then now we're done. We have created the entire 3D rotation of this section. So then from here, we can do the same process at creating the rest of the audience areas and the seating areas. So if I turn on here, I'll hide this section view, just get a little better view. I can do the mezzanines. And we actually see that the same process applied here so that way we can get some rotation and really start to create much more of a 3D sense quite quickly. All we needed to do was take this sort of rib here and do the same type of revolution. And so we can see that after doing that, we've created these listening areas quite quickly or these audience areas. So if we start to really put this together and I turn on my walls again. Right, we can see now that things are really starting to flesh out quite quickly. And we can do the same process to much more complex images and structural elements within the design. So if, if we look at our section and also our elevation, we can see that there's really complicated geometry over here for these archways. And because we're doing a business class model, we definitely have the ability to do so. So I've taken the same principle of using this follow me and I've created an arch here. So I'll hide all of these again. I'll do the same process. So I can enter into this group and I can use the same follow me. And there I have created one arch and I can do the same type of process for the rest of my drawing. So then I can really easily create a lot of these more complex structural elements such as these and really start to flesh out the model and it, you can see how it gradually becomes more and more detailed. So one important thing to note when we are creating these models and looking at it from the very beginning on, on import is looking at if this model and this venue is symmetrical. So if the venue is symmetrical, it's nice because that means we don't really need to draw on um, 100% of the entire model. We can really only draw half because we can do symmetry within sound vision. So this can save a lot of time in our drawing process because 
now we can just easily rotate and copy all of these surfaces in the model and software itself. And for something like an arena or in some kind of rink or some stadium, this can even be greater. We might only need to draw a quarter of the entire room, especially if it is fully symmetrical. So we can really expedite our process within SketchUp and have it be much more readily available within Sound Vision with still a lot of detail going on. So we have created now all of these audience and these structural elements. But one of the things that we really also want to think about is creating the audience listening levels. So when we are creating a basic Sound Vision model, and drawing everything within Sound Vision, we're really looking at the audience area. And this is the same thing, um, but normally what we want to do in within SketchUp is when we create this type of really complex model, when we're doing this, if we use this same, these same surfaces to predict in Sound Vision, we can run into a couple problems. If we were to have a, a speaker down here and shooting up this way, all of these surfaces that are these steps might be missed because the prediction is going onto every surface and at a lower angle shooting up this way. These higher surfaces could be shadowed. So what we would want to do is actually create a similar rib that we did for creating these revolutions, but make it much more simplified that cuts through all of the seating elements. So that way we actually have a nice even surface. So I've created something here that's a listening level that's cutting through all of this, all of these steps. So that way I can take this area and put it into sound vision. So that way we'll have a nice listening level that we can then control and toggle and manipulate just as we would with any other part of the model, rather than limiting ourselves to predicting onto uh, a element that was not necessarily designed to be this prediction kind of surface. I've actually used a different method here to create this revolution, and it can help for doing very circular ones. And I think both can be very, very powerful depending on the type of audience geometry that you're looking at doing. Um, this is using the kind of array and copy method. Um, in SketchUp and it's quite powerful. Um, there's a YouTube link right over here. Uh, SketchUp training copies and arrays. So if we, if we look that up, it actually tells us how to do this exactly. But what I like to do here is use this method to create some of the listening areas. And then we can, once we're done with that, we actually create listening levels that cut through as we see here, they kind of cut through these seating areas, but now we have much more even surfaces and planes that we can then predict on within Sound Vision. And this gives us another layer of control that we can then start to manipulate and move all of these things around, right? And so the very important thing is just to make sure that we still have all of this organization as whatever layers that we've created here, these are the ones that will be then imported into Sound Vision. So at this point, I've really kind of built everything in here and gotten a very, very complex model quite quickly. Even more of these intricate architectural details, we can really start to include into the model because we have all of this information from the provided CAD drawings that we were given. So at this point, I feel like I'm very comfortable now to go into Sound Vision and really export this. So we have an extension called SketchUp for Sound Vision. And in here, I can actually take my finished model and export this. So perhaps I will call this a theater model. And I'll save it as a text file. We can see all of these faces that have been exported. So from here, I can actually jump into Sound Vision. And I can import this text file that I just created. 
and I'll actually show a basic version. So the economy version of the same model that we were just working on. Just for a little bit ease of simplicity and really assigning all of these groups and really mimicking the same organizational structure that we had within SketchUp, but now being able to create the full model within SoundVision. So we can see all of these surfaces were imported into SoundVision and we can then start to create groups. And these are where I'll just drag all of my surfaces into. And start to really create my organization. And this is much more powerful than having to draw all of these surfaces and then they're just called surface 001 or 002 within sound vision and then you don't have as much of the control of all of these curves and all this detail. So now that I've created all of my sources and put them into groups, I can then make an all group. And this is the group that all of the surfaces that I want to have symmetry on will go into. So now that I've created an all group, I can just right click and go to symmetry and I can mirror. And I have now created the full model in here. So then I can actually start to just drag these symmetrical copies into hey Jordan, the parent group. Uh, yes. I think I see a hole in your floor. Ah, yes. So this can be something that is a result of maybe inac inaccuracy or an error in the drawing process in SketchUp. Maybe you use the follow me tool and there was an error in where you did your arc or something like that. So actually, I can go back into importing and I can import this orchestra fixed version. So I went back into SketchUp and fixed my orchestra settings so I could fill this hole in. And it'll give you this window here. It says if you want to clear 3D room data, if I hit clear, I will get rid of everything that I just did. So you can just import it and it will actually add these new surfaces in there. So you can really increase your workflow by drawing in SketchUp. You can work through your architectural elements, export it as a text file and get into SoundVision. Then you can work in your listening areas and you can build it piece by piece or you can just do the entire thing if you would like. So I can make an orchestra here, drag it in, and then I can apply my symmetry, and then I fix that hole that was in that spot before. So that way, if I were going to be doing my prediction, now I don't have any kind of those errors that I was working with in the first place. And then from here, we actually have a little bit more customization that's available to us if we would like, depending on preference and aesthetics. We can change the colors here within Sound Vision, and we have a pretty good level of control that we have on the group level. So anything that is on the group, so we can make the stage red, for example, I can make a blue roof, and so on and so forth. And so then we can now have both highly complex models, but then we can also get much more accurate with having more defined colors. So this helps with the aesthetics as well as being able to differentiate between all of these other kinds of surfaces, especially if you have a very, very complex model going on. And one of the things that I, I really find powerful about being able to only draw half the room if possible is that it helps with my workflow personally. What I like to do when I do designs is that I have the ability to hide one half of the architecture that I don't need. So now I can hide half the roof. And I can now start to add in all of my loudspeakers and do my prediction while still making sure that I can see these architectural elements, but it's now just on one side. So then I have a full view of everything that's going on without really needing to zoom in and become more precise or even look through the opacity, which can greatly help. But if you can have the ability to toggle this on and off, Right, that makes the usability and ease of use within navigating the design much simpler. So this is the basic model that we've created, but let's actually look at the complex model. I've got that up and running over here in this version. And we can see 
we've got a little bit more in depth with all the colors as well as really seeing all of the detail that we created within SketchUp and really being able to navigate that and see it realized within the design in Sound Vision. And I can take the same principle that we did before by having drawn symmetrically that we can then start to hide all of these other details. So I can hide half of these walls here and really start to get a better picture as I start to place my speakers within the model and do my design. One of the things that is very good to mention here at the same time is the listening levels and the heights. So in drawing within SketchUp, we actually, if we go back to that really quick and we look at our listening level, we can actually see that we drew this at ground plane. So right at the bottom of the seats, right at the, the floor. And so the reason why we do that is because then we can take the plane that we've done and then we can adjust the audience listening heights within sound vision. So if I open up my listening levels here, I can actually see that my listening height is at three feet nine inches for maybe sitting height, but I could make a copy of these and I could make them at standing height. And so I could create two different groups for listening levels sitting and listening levels standing rather than having to draw them separately within SketchUp and do all that kind of thing. I can just easily copy and paste here. And then I can make another one. I can apply two more feet. And then now I've got a much higher version for my listening levels. That way, now if we wanted to do a standing version, now we can see how that will predict onto the surfaces at this new height. And then we can just toggle back and forth between these models. So that was a very simplified version and hopefully a, a fairly concise walkthrough of the organizational process that we look at when we go from SketchUp, starting from importing our CAD files and then looking at ways to tackle and organize our file and prepare it for going into Sound Vision. So lastly, um, as a recap, so for audience area and audience mapping, it's nice to be able to have all of this level of detail that we see, but it can lead to some problems when we do some of our predictions in here because there's all these holes. If we look, we created a center aisle in this example, and now when we look at our cut view, all of these planes don't exist anymore because we might have some holes in the area for our mapping. Whereas if we do a simple version, we're now able to see the entire plane and the entire area that we're looking to create our model for. So by being able to create both the architectural side of having our seating with our aisles and rows, as well as creating a listening level area, we're able to have the best of both worlds and toggle between both the nice pretty architectural version as well as the critical area for looking at our mapping. And then looking at the return on investment of drawing in SketchUp, right? We have the ability now with very complex CAD models or 3D models that are given to us to really go, you know, to go as very far and as far as we want in our complexity. But how much is too much, right? We are spending a lot of time uh, to create these more detailed models and is that return on investment too much, right? We have to really think back about the analogy of those airlines, right? Economy, business, and first class. And even if we look at here, these three different examples, even the quote unquote economy version is quite detailed in and of itself. It looks, it looks nice and gets the point across. Whereas that business class version, the middle one looks great. It's very representative of the surface and the structure and all of the little details that we might see in the bottom one might be way too much because also 
sound vision will look at all of these surfaces and factor them into their calculations or they have the potential to. Yeah, Jordan, I think uh, it's kind of interesting to see that like uh, comparison between the two because uh, I think even your economy model is better looking than any other sound design I've seen out there. So uh, your your idea of business class, Jordan, is pretty far up there. That's for sure. That looks uh, really quite impressive. So mm -hmm. good job. Yeah, even the, this uh, straightforward economy version can still convey a lot of information and it was drawn in a very quick amount of time, right? Creating the layout and the uh, parts for the walls and the stage and just creating those traces is really quite quite simple and quite quick and by you know really playing around in SketchUp and learning more about the tools and finding all these tutorials online right your proficiency with drawing can become much faster even if even if you're not a modeler and a 3d modeler it is really a quite quite simple way that if you can just look at a 2d version and there's extrude something and push pull it you can create a 3d structure out of something that doesn't take a whole lot of time so um, the and the level at which Sound Vision can handle all of these models and the amount of surfaces uh, is is quite quite impressive. And we can really create, you know, truly first class models that really almost recreate the entire three D experience if we really wanted to go that far. And yes, this is um, kind of the end of our presentation cool. as far as content goes. Um, so thank you guys for listening and for your attention. Yeah, Jordan, we had a question and it was actually a yeah. really good one. Uh, Joe in the in the Q and A was asking if the plugin only exports live layers or all layers. So whatever layers our whatever layers that are visible will be the ones that are exported to sound vision. So for the example that I wanted to fix my orchestra, I went just back into left this orchestra as the only one visible, did my fix and then exported it back. So anything that's visible within SketchUp, when you create your text file, that's what will be thrown into uh, sound vision. Yeah, cool. That, Thank you. That was that was that, that was actually it. yeah, that was perfect. Um, and uh, I don't I didn't see many other questions. I think you did a great job of walking everyone through the process. I really uh, I really thank you for uh, taking the time to do this. Um, for those of you who have more questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, I think there's actually uh, an email, if I recall, specifically for the drafting team and application. Jordan, do you remember what that is off the top of your head? I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I'm sorry to put you on the spot there. To any one of our your your local application engineer and then they will get forwarded over to the CAD department, which there's one in France and then there is one in based in the US as well. Excellent. And we'll work and on any models. Excellent. Thank you, Jordan. Um, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. We are going to uh, uh, be uh, back tomorrow morning in the US. That's evening in Europe with uh, our next presentation. It's from Etienne Cortel. It's all about measurement quality and how to get the best data for your system calibration. We're going to be doing this all next week as well. The schedule will be going up uh, momentarily, so please don't hesitate to look out on social media and check out what we're doing. Uh, everyone, please out there, be safe, be healthy. Use this time to grow your skills and learn more. Jordan, uh, as always, amazing job. Uh, you are the uh, Sound Vision Ninja, that's for sure. Um, thank you for uh, your time and effort, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a great, great night, evening, morning, everyone. Stay safe. Cheers. Bye, guys. Cheers. Mm -hmm.